Today I'm working on my 94 Ranger. It's got a M5OD transmission behind a three liter V6. The transmission shifter is completely worn out. As you can see in every gear, it has just a ton of slop side to side. So I ordered a Dorman rebuild kit. It's got bushings on the top and bottom side of the shifter body as well as a wave washer on the top. And then it's got the primary pins that help to align the shifter on the front and rear sides of the body. And we're gonna get everything torn down. I was already at the point of getting to the shifter because I had to pull the carpet to get a lot of the 30 year old funk out of it. It was starting to smell just cause the truck doesn't get driven as often as I'd like to. And so, as you know, when a truck sits, it kind of gets kind of a musty smell to the carpet. So I've got that pulled out, getting that all cleaned up. OxyClean is the way to go for carpets, by the way. And at this point, I figure I'll go ahead and tear into the shifter, get that put back together. And then once everything goes back in, I've got a shifter bezel from a 95 Ranger that has the cup holders on each side of the shifter. And that will hopefully help to avoid drinks spilling out because the cup holders in 94 were entirely too shallow for anything other than a soda can. Uh, also, the shifter likes to hit the drinks in the cup holders on the console. So the goal is to get the cups moved down to the sides of the shifter when driving. And hopefully that'll help to alle alleviate any spills along the way. All right, so to get started on the inside of the shifter, you'll find this bolt here. And it's kind of an interesting design where you unthread the nut from the front side and you're going to thread it in on the back side to get it to break loose. Now you'll still typically need to kind of hit it with a hammer on the front to get the stud to slide out. And being that I just recently had mine out, I don't need to use the threaded portion on the back to pull it. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick tap and then finish unthreading the nut by hand. And there you go. It's got a flat side here so that when you slide everything together, you can see there's kind of a taper there. I don't know if the camera is zooming properly, but there's a flat spot side here. So when you push everything together and you tighten that nut down, it cinches everything down and that shifter should not come apart. And then from there, with all of that out of the way, you can just slide the shifter off remove that lower bezel and you've got access to your main shifter body. So by the way, the nut for the shifter itself is a 17 on this particular truck. On some others, I've seen it as small as a 15. I've seen it as big as an 18. So just make sure you've got the right size nut before you go stripping something out. And then after checking a few sizes, the Allen screws on the original cover appear to be a T30 Torx bit. And obviously, as with anything, you want to be careful that you're not stripping don't just go pounding away right out the gate until you're confident in what you're working with. That's, that's what she said, maybe? Not sure. That appears to be part of the original shifter. I don't see Okay, so this used to be the wave washer, I believe, which is now completely flat. And 
there is no bushing material whatsoever. You can see here, it's kind of built up. In here, you got a little bit of nylon, some nylon chunks at random. So that's going to contribute to my rebuild eventually. The fact that there was no more nylon bushing means pretty much that it's all loose in the transmission somewhere, which it's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. And then these are the pins. There's one here and there's one here that I need to get pressed out. I'm going to figure that out next and then we will move on to the rebuild from there. So I got that passenger side pin started. Basically just held a punch against it on the inside like so, so that you can see it on that side. I hit it with a hammer a few times. Now that it's started, we're going to try a chisel to get it the rest of the way out. Trying to be sure that I don't get the transmission housing too badly and cause any damage. There you go. Let's get the new one's lined up. Actually, we need to do the lower bushing first before we can proceed with the top. These are the new bushings. You can see that they've got bevels in them for the pins. They do appear to be identical. So we're gonna get this cleaned out. Rest of that gunk out of there. And we'll set one in place. I think I'm going to put this washer back in the bottom of it just to help fill a little bit of that gap there. I feel like maybe it's a little extra worn out from not having the bushing for God's know how long. And let's grab a pin. See if we can get this bad boy in there. Nice. So the pin is not the correct size. All right, back to the drawing board. All right, so what I'm looking at doing is reusing the original pins because they, the new ones are not fitting well. They can just slide right in and out by hand. But to get the new pins in, I need to remove this plate here, which has four bolts. That one's apparently not even holding anything. And so three bolts on this one, and then we'll be able to remove this, and then I can drive the pins in from each side. So we got the passenger pin set, just driving in the driver's side. A little awkward positioning, leaning over from the driver's seat around the steering wheel. Let's 
so that is done and now we will slide our shifter back down once I get it cleaned off which I must have left the rag in the garage all right so they do recommend lubricating the shift shaft just a thin layer all the way across we're not trying to prove any points here just enough to keep everything moving fluidly without causing any problems so just a light layer all the way around and then when you go to reinsert it make sure that you've got your flat spot for the retainer bolt again flat spot on the bolt itself here we'll kind of press up against there to pull everything tight with the actual shifter so we're going to set that back into the passenger side try to remember specific position and I think I might have marred the pins a little bit that's a whole lot better already the grease because it smells like butthole and then we are going to place the upper bushing again you've got the bevels for the pins on each side make sure that's aligned properly and then we have a new wave washer you can see why it's called a wave washer just to help keep everything tight in there cover with the seal on the bottom side I am actually going to reuse the original bolts because they are Torx as opposed to basic Phillips heads I just feel like I can get them more reliably more reliably snug being Torx instead of Phillips and I mean this is a shifter so you don't need to go batshit crazy tightening this stuff down you just need it good and snug and if I remember right the shifter grommet is actually the breather for the transmission as well so you can see on this older one where there was some liquid across the top I think that was just humidity if you will moisture coming up as it was breathing during its regular processes. And I'm gonna get this kind of zipped down. Gasket. You want to make sure that you're going evenly. So that everything seats properly. It didn't actually tell me what to do with this piece here. My guess is that it just goes across the top of everything to help hold it a little tighter once it's all together. is in the kit but it doesn't make sense 
on how it actually fits on here. Wonder. No. Okay, so I don't know what was up with that little rubber piece I was trying to put here. Everything is sealing up properly and the instructions didn't actually specify. I'm gonna go with that piece. Shouldn't have been part of this kit, so we're just gonna move along. I've got the cover plate back in place, the tunnel cover. And I'm just kind of snugging everything back down. Now this is going to threaded nut clips on the floor pan itself. So you definitely don't want to go crazy over torquing everything. Um, and this one was not attached because the nut clip had slid off. And so apparently last time I messed with it, I just left that bolt loose and probably was frustrated and just moved on in life. But this is back together. And next we will do the shifter itself. Now I'm not going back in with my bezel and everything just yet because I'm still letting the carpet dry after all the cleaning I did on the carpet. And that'll be fine for now until everything kind of snugs, or that'll be fine for now. And then once the carpet goes in, I'll maybe do a follow-up of some sort. So you wanna make sure you're careful. When you go to release that little stub shaft for the first time, if you do need to hit it with a hammer, thread the nut back on a little ways before you do so to protect from mushrooming the tip of the threads, because if you do, it'll never go back together properly and it'll just be a nightmare. So I'm gonna finish zipping this down and we'll uh, see how it looks from there. Okay, so as you can see, when we're in gear, it's a lot tighter. With each gear, we don't have nearly as much slop. Again, the carpet will go back in before everything gets finally buttoned together. I'm hoping to find a replacement boot by then, and we'll just kind of see what happens. But it's not a huge deal. I'm really happy with the way it turned out, and we'll kind of tighten it up a little further once everything goes back together for good. But for now, that's it. Very simple rebuild on the M5OD dash R2 uh, transmission shifter rebuild. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to help you out if I can.